Maybe like some of you, I am both a hobbyist photographer and a gear enthusiast, and I often bring way too much camera gear with me on trips. I'm that dad you see juggling three cameras to capture every family moment. That's a little embarrassing, actually. To give the GR a run for its money and to simplify my daily carry, I decided to bring my Ricoh GR as my main camera on a trip to the Grand Canyon. Here is my setup. The Ricoh GR, of course, the original APS-C version, and three batteries. The batteries are a must-have as this model eats through batteries pretty quickly. I brought a filter adapter and a hood, though I rarely use the hood. The reason for that is the filter I most often use is the circular polarizing filter, and the hood doesn't have a cutout to rotate it, so no hood. But I do use the filter adapter a lot. Over here I brought my FlashQ compact wireless flash system. This is a pretty sweet setup that I'm still learning to use, but I can already highly recommend. For the price inside, I think it's a really killer setup. You'll see some examples later. All of this with some extra cables fits in a bag just larger than my hand. Let's pack it up and hit the road. It's a great feeling whenever a camera gets out of your way and lets you enjoy the moment you're capturing. That is the essence of the Ricoh GR for me. And more specifically, the Ricoh GR for me on a family vacation. With two little ones to hang on to, my hands are usually full, and if not, could be at any moment. Being able to throw my camera quickly into my pocket is really nice. I already need to carry a bag to carry one of my children, so not having an additional camera bag is nice as well. Of course, the Ricoh GR isn't the only camera that can do this well. Probably any compact camera could, but for me, the Ricoh GR is the nicest, most compact camera I've used so far. The great thing about this compact setup is that it in no way sacrifices image quality. In my first video on the Ricoh GR, I noted that it was like having a full-fledged landscape camera in your pocket. After this trip, I stand by that even more so. Even this older 16 megapixel sensor from 2013 pulls out colors and details really nicely. And being married to this wonderful lens makes it unstoppable. Sure, I can tell the difference with newer sensors in ISO performance and dynamic range, but in almost all cases, I can never see it in any practical way. Not only is it compact and great image quality, but the controls are wonderful to use. It is simple and intuitive, easy to learn, and best of all, can be used one-handed, no problem. This is a camera with full manual controls and full feature with all the physical buttons to support those actions. Handling is very important to me on a camera, and other than this weird dial switch button combo thing in the back, which is easy to flip into the wrong setting, it is just about perfect. As a fun note, this camera is pretty good for starscapes. You can select an infinity focus mode or manual focus with it very easily. The lens performs well. The big issue here is the high ISO performance. But I bet if I had the patience to stack a few images, or attach it to a cheap tracker mount, it would look pretty good. Watch me, one day I'll do that. As I mentioned before, I'm using this filter adapter quite a lot. You can see in the images the darkening of the sky which is caused by the polarizing filter. It's a dramatic look I personally really like for this kind of photography. There is a wide-angle converter you can buy for this camera that is quite expensive, but apparently really good image quality. I am a little interested in trying it out, so let me know if you have tried it and what your thoughts are with using it. I did play with the Flash Q quite a few times on the trip. Like I said, I'm still using it, so no judgment. 
This is my first time really shooting with a flash, but it is a lot of fun. Having an off-camera flash that fits in your pocket opened up a lot of opportunities I would have otherwise not even tried. Of course, the Ricoh GR and GR2 have built-in flash, which comes in handy quite often to fill in those shadows. And I still use that as well for its convenience. During the entire trip, there was maybe only two times where I wish I had a longer lens, or the ability to zoom. A few more times I wish it focused a little bit faster. Even more often than those, I wanted a tilting screen. But overall, I do not regret bringing the camera as my only daily carry. It was always there, predictable and easy to use with great results. If you asked me even two years ago if I would have ever considered getting a pocket camera, I would have said no and certainly not to replace carrying a bigger camera on a daily carry. But my life circumstances have changed a bit, and now I'm convinced. I'll always have at least one pocket camera with me. Do you own a pocket camera? Let me know your thoughts on them and the adventures you have had with them traveling by your side. Stop by the forum to share those stories and photos and join a growing community of like-minded, easygoing photographers who just enjoy the joy of photography. Check out my Instagram to see whatever I'm shooting with now or just to chat. Remember to go out there and shoot wherever you are with whatever you got. And until next time, happy snapping.